Progress on multi-denominational schools has been described as too slow. 236 new schools must be delivered by 2030 to meet the government's own target. That's not clear whether it's going to be met or not. Michael Nugent is the chairperson of Atheist Ireland. Michael, good morning. Good morning. Are you surprised at the slow rate of progress moving away from predominantly Catholic schools? 89% of schools right now are Catholic schools. No, because it's clear that it's, it's not happening. Uh, and even if it did happen, even if the government did meet its target, it wouldn't solve the problem. The Oireachtas Education Committee several years ago agreed with Atheist Ireland that the, that the problem is multiple patronage, multiple ethos, that you cannot have pluralism in education by having a different school for each different type of people around the country. There are two important aspects to it. One is that the government is saying that they are trying to have multi-denominational schools. Multi-denominational schools are religious schools. The United Nations Human Rights Committee and the Committee on Economic and Social Cultural Rights has told Ireland to open non-denominational schools. Uh, the the um, Atheist Ireland has just made a submission to the UN and that's just by coincidence this, this week. The second thing is, even if, hypothetically, that target of 400 multi-denominational schools was reached, which it won't be, but even if it was reached, the Catholic Church are trying to negotiate that if they give up a certain amount of schools, that they would have a stronger Catholic ethos in the schools they retain, which would be the majority of schools. Now, given that most parents around the country don't live in an area where there are multiple schools, so their only school, local school, is a Catholic school, they would be in a position where not only would they not have access to these multi-denominational schools, but their only local school would have an even stronger Catholic ethos. So the whole policy first of all, isn't going to happen, and secondly, even if it did happen, well, it would be flawed. If, if the government wanted to do this, Michael Nugent, surely the obvious thing would be state-funded, state-run schools are removed from religious patronage, not taking away from the work that the Catholic Church previously did to provide education, but in in this particular decade, give the state back control of all the schools. That would be the ideal situation, and, and, but even without that, there is an intermediary step that, that would uh, address a lot of problems, which is just to tell the schools that whatever the, whatever religion the patron is, that they can't use their religious ethos to, in, to influence children who are not of that religion. And one obvious way of doing that is, is to, for them to recognise the existing constitutional right to attend publicly funded schools without attending religious instruction. That's being ignored and, and children are being forced into religious education, even though they have a constitutional right. But they're not being forced. Not they, can, they, they can sit it out, Michael Nugent. It's, it's well documented at this point that not every child has to sit through religious education as, as previously they may have had to do. We, we are making progress in that regard. Religious education is not compulsory. In practice, it is compulsory because schools say that they don't have the resources to supervise children outside of the religion class and therefore they make the children stay within the religion class so they absorb the religion anyway. Now, the, the, and it's probably true that schools don't have the resources in many cases. But the are, you that that people, are you afraid that students may accidentally absorb religion? Oh, absolutely. Certainly, that there's many uh, reports of that, of children, uh, parents who don't want their child to, to attend religious instruction. They're sat at the back of the class and then they come back telling, uh, telling their parents that God did this and God did that. That's absolutely mm. indisputable. But that, you mentioned parents. Is, that, is the reality of the situation, though, that parents don't really care? Uh, and, and multiple studies have been brought out about this. You're clearly passionate about it. Many people working in Educate Together are passionate about it. But when you speak to parents, they don't really care as long as the children get an education. Who's running the school? Well, I think they don't really care. Part of it is, is probably illusory. I, I think one of the, the problems is, in, in most issues, the people that are campaigning against an injustice are the people who are most directly concerned. Now, in this case, the, the people who are most directly concerned are parents whose children are going through the, the school system at any given time. And one of the difficulties that they have, is, and a lot of parents tell us this, is, is that they're concerned that if they raise the issue, that their child will be furthered discriminated against or alienated because they are parents. Okay, but the parents my, po- my point, you have, do you accept my point that the majority of parents right now, 93% are in Catholic schools, the majority don't actually care who is in, who's the patron of the school and who's running it, even if they're not Catholic? No, I, I don't accept that. I, I, there's there's a, a lot of opinion polls and so on on this, and what seems to be the, the, the consensus is, is that parents are, are re- reluctant to say that they want to change in the school at the moment as their child is going through it. 
But if they're asked in the abstract, do they pre- would they prefer a, a non-denomination school? Most parents would prefer that. All right. Michael Urgent of Atheist Ireland, thanks for joining us on News Talk Breakfast.